Hey everyone, I'm Charting Man Dan with the Chart Guys, full-time trader utilizing technical analysis and charts. We're going to check in on the broader market attempting an oversold bounce today. We'll see if it has legs into the next couple of days or not, and how I'm going to determine whether there's any red flags on this bounce attempt. Just a heads up before we get into it, so no pregame show this week as Lori has suffered an injury and had to go to the hospital, and fortunately she's on the mend now and should be good to go soon, but for this week, going to give her a breather, and we'll have other Chart Guys members covering the live streams and doing these daily videos and wishing Lori a speedy recovery. All right, so looking at the futures charts, we have the S&P 500 leading the bounce, and that's due to the financial sector relative strength. You can see SPY bounce underway, but the way we ended today, it, it breaks up uh, continuity and clarity, in my opinion, because you look at that upper wick and you say, uh-oh, that looks like a weak bounce attempt, and that may be the case, but it's also just fine hourly consolidation at this point. So it's the kind of thing where, you know, tomorrow if we open higher, it's a healthy hourly higher low, and this hourly uptrend may see continuation for this bounce. And if we open lower, it's a big red flag to get back over half of that bounce. So it's essentially, you know, into the end of the day, we just started hourly consolidation, and that's where we're gonna get information. You know, a lot of the time, when I'm looking bullish, what the consolidation looks like gives me a lot of information. And it essentially, it's like a cliffhanger in a movie. It just cuts us off here and we're not gonna know. You know, I love the five minute downtrend as our guide. As soon as we confirm the five minute downtrend, hourly consolidation underway. And now we would look for the five minute uptrend back to the bulls for the hourly higher low to be set. But again, we're just gonna wake up tomorrow and it's either gonna be an hourly higher low is set or a red flag with the size of the retracement. And so if these bulls do not set a healthy hourly higher low and keep this bounce going, it's a daily bear flag on the table, absolutely. And I'm gonna have to see the high of today break tomorrow for bulls to prove to us that this bounce can get some follow through. Definitely looking for the bounce today because of the NASDAQ and the semiconductor sector, SMH, getting to first daily oversold conditions to end last week. But we know that we have to be skeptical of bulls and make them prove it to us. NASDAQ, just a daily inside bar. QQQ, we can see that. Again, same deal. There's no red flags on this hourly consolidation into the end of the day. And we bounced from the low of the day to the high of the day over a number of hours. That was a 1.75% bounce. Hourly consolidation is inevitable when you see that kind of bounce. But... Again, we don't know what this consolidation is going to look like. We're going to wake up and it's going to tell us right now it's a potential hourly bull flag. If we open lower, we're going to be looking at 50% retracement and an equilibrium. If we open higher, it's a potential hourly bull flag. So one of the downsides to swing trading versus day trading where, you know, day trading, you got all the information you need. There's no breaks in continuity so we'll see. Another factor is the NASDAQ. My guide on the futures chart has been four hour EMA 12 resistance. That helped. You know, I wanted to gap down on Friday to look aggressive long for a bounce. But by the time we got to the open on Friday, we had already bounced one and a half percent. We knew a four hour lower high was the most likely scenario. We've been rejecting the whole way down from this EMA and we opened Friday morning right under it. We confirmed a 15 minute head and shoulders. And today we topped out again, held the low of Friday, confirmed a little uptrend, but yet here we are at the end of the day, still struggling to get over four hour EMA 12 resistance. So essentially it's a, all right, nice bounce attempt. We had all major sectors, QQQ, XLF, XLV at the high of the day at the same time at one point this afternoon, but we need more. We need the highs of today to break tomorrow. SMH and QQQ are daily inside bars. If they do not break the high of today tomorrow, then bears keep full short-term control. And so SMH must break 204.38. And even then, that's, you know, that's just baby step one. We need to break the inside bar bullish. We need to follow through with significant retracement. We need to confirm a daily uptrend. So it's just this whole checklist of what the bulls have to do to regain control. And, you know, check one is that QQQ and SMH held the low of Friday. Check two would be breaking the inside bar bullish. Check mark number three would be the bounce following through for a couple of days. Check mark number four would be a daily uptrend confirming. So one step at a time, remaining skeptical of bulls, 
just ensuring that they're, you know, the burden's on Bulls. We know that much. And that helps stay tough, you know, not make excuses. I want SMH and the NASDAQ to bounce. I like playing oversold bounces. I played SOXL for the semiconductors and NVDA today. I want this bounce to follow through. But if I start cutting the Bulls slack and saying, making excuses for them, oh, well, it's okay, we didn't close over this level because X, Y, Z. That's when you get into trouble and your bias starts to lead to mistakes. So I almost want the opposite. You know, I want it to go up and bounce, but stay tough on it. All right, Bulls, prove it. Keep, keep me in my position. Prove to me that I should keep holding this because you're showing me that, that this bounce is following through. Tesla, I have no interest until after earnings. I would love a dump on earnings because I have no position and I would love to then scout a, a, a three-month higher low compared to 101 in maximum fear. If we could get a 10% drop on earnings, that would be nice in terms of uh, making an attempt at a longer term higher low. But uh, for now, daily stair step drop, just continued weakness day in and day out, relative weakness. And they are piling it on. It, it reminds me of the last time when we dumped, I mean, this was even more brutal. Elon was selling on the way down as well, but uh, very similar in terms of just all bears. And it's it's the EV space as well. I mean, look at NIO in China. Look at these charts. This is the weekly chart. Look at XPEV, also Chinese, I believe. Look at LI. They had bad news today, cutting prices in China. So the EV space as a whole is struggling significantly. And Tesla, of course, the leader of that space, also struggling significantly. We'll see what earnings does tomorrow after hours. Keeping in mind the tech sector then has earnings later this week, Meta, Google, Microsoft, I believe are the three Wednesday, Thursday to be paying attention to. The financial sector is looking pretty good. Comparatively, the weekly higher low is set. We held EMA 12. The big question for everything is do we confirm the weekly downtrend from here? Again, this reminds me of, you look at the NASDAQ on the weekly back here, this was a 20 something percent move, big enough pullback to confirm a weekly downtrend into multiple months of consolidation. 20% something move, big enough pullback. When we bounce from here next, do we confirm the weekly downtrend? Spy as well. Do we confirm the weekly downtrend for further monthly consolidation? If not, if it's a you know big drop for a few weeks and then we just slowly grind our way back up, then we know we're going back to all time highs. If we confirm the weekly downtrend, that then means this may be three, four months of consolidation for all we know. And so that would be a, a big tell in terms of information. And so it's the same thing with XLF. Do we confirm the weekly downtrend from here for the first time since our melt up started, which would tell us if that happens, further monthly pullback is coming. Now we know we're watching for a weekly lower high. The next question is, can the bulls confirm a daily uptrend? This is a big bounce. We've got space for a daily high or low here. Can we confirm the daily uptrend to keep this move going? And if the whole market looked like XLF, the bulls would be a lot more confident. But obviously, GigaQ, SMH, even SPY doesn't look like this. We have not been bouncing for four days. I mean, this is GigaQ bulls are, and SMH, they're looking at this and saying, I hope we do that over the next two days. XLV, potential daily bear flag, simple statement. If daily EMA 12 is resistance, it's a daily bear flag. So have to get over that after rejecting today. Big drop, we've got a ton of space on the weekly. So bigger picture, you know, I always wanna have time frames aligned where, all right, this is a setup I'm looking for on the hourly. This is a setup I'm looking for on the daily with a different ticker. This is a setup I'm looking for on the weekly. I know eventually I'll be scouting a weekly lower high in healthcare once the bounce gets going. I know I'm looking at ARKK for a weekly lower high. We've been dropping in a stair-step drop here for six weeks. It's one of the weaker sectors. It's a potential long-term bear flag. So I know that I want to see a bounce get going and scout an eventual weekly lower high. But I'm not even going to consider looking for that for weeks. But it's a what I call a conveyor belt of trades where... If you can you know, align the different time frames where you have a setup that you know the most likely scenario, you just wait for the conveyor belt to make its way. And maybe if we bounce you know, a couple weeks in May, 
By the end of May, I'm scouting a weekly lower high in ARKK. Who knows? But XLV, lots of space for a weekly lower high. Question number one, though, is, is this a daily bear flag burden on bulls to prove to us that it is not? We definitely need another green day tomorrow in the market for these bulls to try and convince us a bounce can follow through. IWM, a lot of space for a daily lower high here as well. Bounce is underway. There's a lot of space for a weekly lower high eventually as well. But first things first, hourly uptrend is our guide on the daily bounce. When we lose the hourly uptrend, it's the first indication that the daily lower high is being set. Cannabis stocks, we're watching CGC for a daily lower high is the most likely scenario. Little double top at 833, 836 the last two days. ACB already set the daily lower high. A little bit weaker today. MSOS, daily downtrend following through. Lower high, lower low, lower high. We knew that rumor is just going to set a daily lower high if it's only a rumor. Drop to the lower low. Next time we bounce, we can bounce 10% from here and just form another daily lower high. So the daily downtrend is our guide. As far as I'm concerned, this sector is designed to slow bleed if there's not news. By its, its default is slow bleed. And whether that's due to the fact that we're on the OTC or naked shorts doing whatever, I don't care. Whatever the reason is, I know that slow bleed is, is the, the homeostasis of this sector until there is actual concrete news that changes something. Big day for Riot and some of these crypto miners. After the halving, uh, a lot of people, you know, these names selling off into the halving. And now that the halving has come and gone, a little bit of a short squeeze on Riot. This was the biggest shift of capital between Riot and MARA that I've seen in a very long time. If you look at M Riot divided by MARA, the biggest green candle in months, which means the biggest flow of capital, the biggest outperformance of Riot compared to MARA in at least five months. So that's very notable. And we know that we've got a lot of space now for a daily higher low. I'm scouting Bitcoin for a daily higher low next consolidation. Riot, CLSK, a lot of follow through. Scouting a daily higher low next consolidation. So big move for the bulls. And the hourly uptrend is our guide. We're seeing further follow through. They're pushing Riot after hours here. Just grinding on up. Stronger than Bitcoin, stronger than the NASDAQ today. You can see Bitcoin pulling back the last 20 minutes. Riot doesn't care. They're putting a squeeze on some bears right now. And we'll see if we gap up again tomorrow. If we gap up tomorrow, it's a three gap up bearish reversal pattern, which just means keep an eye out for a temporary top. Obviously, a lot will depend on what NASDAQ and Bitcoin is doing, but... Very nice move, very nice volume. And MARA, it bounced as well, just not nearly the same. So I will be interested in, as I mentioned, Bitcoin, CLSK, Riot, scouting daily higher lows, next consolidation. Dollar, trying to confirm a daily bull flag. If we fail, we'll zoom out and look for weekly consolidation, but key short-term support, 105.74 is still holding. Big dump day for the metals, traded sideways, finally rolling over. Go check out Chart Guys Balancing Trade Strategy video. Utilize our website search feature because we've got all these articles and videos, but balance. So you search balance, you got all this stuff, but I want, we got a lot of stuff about balance. Balancing Scales Trade Setup. It's an educational video. And the NASDAQ just did it, where you, you have an extremely strong trending market. You then trade sideways, and that's the scales balancing out before they tilt. So demand is exceeding supply for a long time. The scales start doing this, and then it flips. Supply exceeding demand. And the metals just did this as well. On the daily, sideways for gold, after a big trending move, and now supply outweighing demand. So weekly consolidation just getting underway. And we're watching, actually, 
Gold still has another 40 cents to go before it's official, but silver leading the way down. Huge drop, 5% drop today. Weekly consolidation underway. Silver bulls really hope that this weekly consolidation stays healthy because if we reject from this level, this zone, then we can stay range bound. I mean, we just stayed range bound for an entire year here. And if we don't get over that level, maybe this is turning into a, you know, five year range bound, maybe even more. So don't get back too much of this move, Silver, because you gotta stay strong. Gotta get over 3014 to get to decade plus highs. And that's a pretty hard rejection initially. Keep holding weekly EMA 12 for both gold and silver. I did size down my gold and silver swings today because of losing daily EMA 12 support. Now it's just a question of what does weekly consolidation look like from here as the miners are on the verge of confirming the daily downtrend into further weekly pullback. Same thing, need to hold EMA 12 to try and keep it from being a big red flag on the size of the pullback. All right, prove it, bulls. Break the highs of day tomorrow. And watch the hourly uptrend as our guide. I took all of my hedges off to end last week. Took the majority of my hedges off. And my IRA was protecting on, on the, the pullback. And I will add them back if we get red flags on this bounce attempt. Again, in terms of clarity, I'd love to see another two days of bounce from here. But definitely prepared for the possibility that does not happen. Tomorrow is going to give us a bunch of information with these daily inside bars on QQQ and SMH. Hope you're well, do good things, and we will see you soon. You got a goose on one leg, a duck on one leg. Okay, good duck.